How's it going everyone, Laser here and in today's video I wanted to show you how to change settings update firmware on your Mat 60 he So if you want to access the web app, you need to go to the address which you see over here, it's hub.fgg.com.cn which takes you to the uh, web page. Now your look might be a bit different, I already added my keyboard here, but if you see nothing here, just press add new equipment, you will have a pop-up window. Choose Mat 60HE from the screen, press connect and it will automatically connect to your keyboard. The first thing we'll do is to update the firmware. Now don't press on the left here where you see the firmware tab because it will take you like out of the uh, keyboard app. Go to other settings. There you can see the update now button next to the uh, notification that there is a new version, version 1.05. We're going to do it now. So I press update now and I press select device when I press it. I get another pop-up window, I choose MAT60 again. There out of the pop-up window we choose Remote Performance Edition. Uh, this will give us the latest features related to MAT60 HE. Uh, let's press continue. And now we need to put the keyboard into upgrade mode, we'll press the button. The, the keyboard has disconnected from the app but this is as intended, then we press the button to start the upgrade. You get, you might get a pop-up window here which might ask you to connect the keyboard again and if it does just select the right keyboard, select the MAT60 HE, press OK and it should be fine. The update is really fast, as you can see it's already finished, I just pressed OK, it's completed. Now just to be on the safe side, I'm going to refresh the page to make sure that everything is fine. I usually also connect and disconnect the keyboard, but it, for this uh, for this video let's, I think it should work fine. So there are a couple of options here, I'll go through performance mostly, but we'll also touch on the other um, settings you might change. So we have uh, bindings, we can change different bindings, different shortcuts, but we'll not do anything here. Uh, if you don't like the standard layout, you can just change it here. There's also lighting settings for RGB, but again, I'm sure you already changed RGB many times, so I'm not going to waste your time explaining this. What's most important for us is the performance tab. Now, before we start um, changing the actuation, rapid trigger settings, one thing I also recommend you doing before that is calibrating the keyboard. Now, you might be fine when you don't do it and the keyboard might work really well, but uh, for just for, for the sake of being, you know, say on the safe side, we'll do the alignment of all of the keys. Uh, in order to do that, go to the calibration tab and press actual alignment and then start press start calibration and right now what you have to do is press every single button to the very bottom so that the keyboard register what the bot top value is and the bottom value is and the firmware uh, right process the signal uh, in the right way so we're just going to do that each and every key maybe even more than once make sure that you fully press it so that the keyboard can record the value that's associated to bottoming out and won't cause any weird behaviors so I'm going to fast forward until the calibration has been made. Okay, I finished my calibration. As you can see, all of the buttons are green, meaning that I've pressed all of them. I'm going to press end calibration and that's it. It doesn't take too much time, but gives you, you know, peace of mind that everything should work fine. Now let's go to the travel tab. And this is where you set your actuation rapid trigger sensitivity. Um, there's a couple of ways to do it. I usually do it for all keys, but if you want to have specific keys more um, sensitive than the others, makes absolute sense. Like for example, the WSAD should be more sensitive than for example, uh, Windows key, right? So, but I do it for all keys. I'll just show you how to do it and you can do it yourself to your specific need. When it comes to button travel, I usually set it at one millimeter. I found that lowering this value going as low as 0.5 millimeter might cause you to accidentally tap uh, wrong buttons and it's very annoying in games like, I don't know, Overwatch, Modern Warfare or, or Marvel Rivals. When you're moving in one direction, you tap the other button. That, for example, it activates one of your skills. So in order to avoid that, I'd go not lower than one millimeter, you might even go a bit higher if you're, you know, uh, if you're constantly missing your keys. Um, when it comes to rapid trigger travel, again, most of the people probably go as low as, uh, as low as the slider allows you to, but I think it's a mistake. I would personally not go lower than 0.2, probably even 0.3 millimeters, because again, we don't want to have that accidental inputs. Uh, for example, when you need to arrest someone in, in, in Modern Warfare or any other game, it might just activate and deactivate all the time, which is very annoying. So my recommended setting is 0.3, uh, maybe even 0.4 if you accidentally uh, pressing the buttons, uh, but feel free to experiment and find your own way to do it. Uh, when it comes to advanced settings, there isn't much, but it's quite important. So dead zone setting uh, for the press, I usually set 0.1 millimeter, which means that, you know, uh, when I 
press on the button, lift, uh, put my finger on the button, won't activate by accident. The keys, the key caps are moving a bit, they are a bit wobbly sometimes, and this tends to activate the button as well. You, um, you should be aware of that. And when it comes to lift, reset, I usually set it to 0 0.01, 0 0.08, something like that, so that, uh, again, when I, when I press the button and, you know, I start adjusting my fingers on the keyboard, it won't read it as a activation. So I'm going to press complete and this is this is what all I would do. We've already covered calibration, you know what to do here. Um, you can also display the parameters here, what are the values. I think it's a neat feature showing you what is happening with, of the, or which all, sorry, with all of the keys. And you can see that the values differ quite a bit. For example, for shift we have 24, 32, for caps we have 23, 45, 25, 41, etc, etc, which means that not all of the keys have the same like readings when it comes to uh, analog keyboards and it's completely normal. Um, let's go to performance. Um, the one thing that I think you should be aware of is the win lock, where you can uh, lock the Windows key so you don't accidentally tab out of your game. Very useful. You can also swap WSAD, but honestly, I've never used it. Um, six, uh, six key rollover, I have no idea what that means. Never used it. False touch prevention mode, I usually turn it on. In this case, it allows the keyboard to be a bit more stable. But again, if you can try working uh, with this on and off, if you don't see the difference, you can just turn it off. Let's go to advanced keys and I'm going to um, jump right to SOCD because I think this is the most important setting here. And uh, the name is a bit misleading, change key menu .socd title. I think it just wasn't translated, but here you find the um, SOCD settings. All you need to do is just press add button, but you need to choose the button first. So I'm going to assign SOCD to my strafing A and D. I'm going to press A button. Then for second key, I'm going to use D. As you can see, it already shows on the screen that it's an SOCD uh, assignment. And there's a couple of ways you can make it behave. Like neutral, it's like the standard setting when you press both of the buttons, nothing happens. Absolute key two priority, meaning that if you press D and A, the D will be always the preferred button. As soon as you release it, the other buttons uh, behave as normal. Absolute key one priority, it's the same, but for, the, for another button. And last input priority is the standard way to use SOCD. You can really change the buttons, press the buttons very quickly, rapidly, and always the one that has been pressed as the last will take priority. And we're going to use this. Tra trigger travel, we leave it as is. Uh, quick trigger, I will change setting on. I believe this is the, mm, tr this will make the um, rapid trigger work uh, alongside the um, SOCD, which we want to have. Okay, and here it is. Here are the most important settings. Um, you can, all, of course, edit macros. I personally don't use macros, never recorded macros, but it, the option is here. And in other settings, uh, we've already explored this one as well, uh, firmware update. Okay, I hope this video was helpful. I hope they explained how to change all of the settings for the Mat 60 he If it was helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel because it helps grow and prepare, helps me prepare content like this for you in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Laser, and I'll see you in the next one.